Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight uh, on this rainy night. It means a lot to me and to Amy, who uh, has sponsored this work from the beginning. So thank you very much. And I think we're going to show a short video first. So. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it then. So I got to pick green eggs and ham. And I love this story, and so I'm going to read it to you. Sam I am. That Sam I am, that Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. Do you like green eggs and, we're and ham? We're going to have a wall. And Mexico's going like to pay the for the wall. I, I do not and like you know why they're going to pay? And, and I have great relationships with Mexico. Would you like them here in the United States Constitution? Relationships with the Mexican right. people. Phenomenal. Well, the like problem is Republican leadership like begins anywhere. from the perspective like green that they can accomplish nothing like and they're them. not willing to try to Sam accomplish anything for conservatives. You know, I will make if Speaker Boehner wants to go on national television as he did this weekend and direct epithets of me or at conservatives, he's welcome to do that. I do not like them here or there. Donald J. Trump is called Rubio, like total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. In a house, not with a house. Uh, 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 listen, you can pick a lot of names out. I'll let there. you choose them. Would not eat them you don't debate that assertion. I'm referring you to my remark as a fundraiser. Would you put them in a larger responsible I think this process Republican leadership. Well, in both this houses. is not the way to do the people that are business. fighting for nothing. This is the American people. They would fight for the business. I was alone. Yes. You've got whole night. Two sides. Yes. Whole night. Whole night. Whole night. I don't know why that's funny. I mean, did you have any in-person briefings? I don't find it funny at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, a little I'm, I'm note of levity at seven points. Well, well, I mean, the reason I say it's not Bureau funny is because it um, went well into the night. It's just fine. For diplomats. A train, a train, a train, a train. Could you, would you on a train? Not on a train, not in a tree. Um, so I... So my name is Amy Pereira, and I'm the director of photography at MSNBC. And just a little bit of a background: um, Mark has been pretty much on assignment for us, covering all of our political um, our political coverage for two years, I guess. Yeah, about a year and a half, two years. And um, we thought that we would go through some of the some pictures that I chose for a few different reasons. Some I just like a lot, and others I just thought would be kind of interesting to hear. Mark's perspective and, and talk about, you know, what he was thinking when he was taking the pictures. So do you so, want to explain the video a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, the video is just, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the video, it, you know, I just wanted to put all these voices that you hear constantly at these events and how they just kind of scream this stuff out. And so I just wanted to, it to kind of merge, but it starts with, you know, Senator Cruz when he was trying to filibuster and he read Green Eggs and Ham, which was the first book I learned how to read, so it's important to me, so. <laughs> um, so I, I wanted to start with this one here because um, it's just a like, perfect uh, campaign type picture. So I thought maybe you could talk a little bit about what it's like to travel with the press pool and kind of what it's like behind the scenes, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, when you're traveling, you know, with the press, you're kind of like in this bubble and, and you're, you're waiting for these moments that are, are different or unique. And so, uh, you know, when it started snowing, you know, you're just like, I hope they throw snowballs. And, they, and he eventually did. He got in a wrestling match and, and, you know, with some of his staffers and so... It, you know, it's just like one of those moments that you're hoping for, you know. Do they, are, you know, there's, there's obviously this performance that they're constantly, um, constantly in, these candidates. You know, they're, they're always on show. But when you're actually traveling with the pool, do you see any moments of them on, when they're relaxed as like normal human beings? Or do you feel like they're always on, even when they're not on stage? I, I think the moments that they show us when they're relaxed are moments that they want us to see. 
-hmm. So there, even those moments are orchestrated, and there, you know, the behind the scenes is orchestrated to show us, you know, that they're human beings or that they're, mm -hmm. you know, just like everybody else. So. Uh, you know, someone like Hillary or, or Trump, they're always super aware of the camera. They always know you're there or they've been briefed who's coming in and, and what you're gonna do, so, hmm. yeah. I guess maybe something that a lot of people don't understand is how you get access, how you're able to do this, so maybe you could also talk about um, credentials and that kind of thing. Yeah, at the beginning, you don't really need credentials because they want all the press that they can get to just show up and take pictures. Mm -hmm. So um, as, it, as it moves along, you need you know, um, to be vetted by the Secret Service, but at the beginning, it's just like a, a cluster. You know, you're just like going, you know, and, and you can work very close to everybody, and it's, it's nice. So. Do you feel like they get more, uh, as the campaign months go on, that they get more um, controlled in how they're, the perception, I mean, the, what, how they're putting themselves out there for you? Yeah. As, a, as media, I mean. Yeah, totally. So at the beginning, maybe it's a little bit more natural, and then it gets... Yeah, like, uh, for me, a lot of my best pictures were a year ago, mm -hmm. you know, before New Hampshire, before Iowa because you could work very close. You could, you know, uh, there weren't a lot of handlers, there weren't secret service. And, uh, you know, you just had an opportunity and, and they, their message wasn't honed then, you know, or, or what, what they want to present, you know, so you could just, you know, you could make the message. You could show them how they really were more, so. Okay. So, I love the pictures of Ted Cruz <laughs> so much. Um, so I just think that he, he just, for whatever reason, this man photographs just really, really well. And you know, the public perception of him is that he is not a personable um, human being. But I was wondering what you felt about, you know, what you, like when you were actually talking with him and you're relating with him, what it's like. Uh, well, I thought I made him look like a human being in this picture, so, you know, I, I think I've shown his best side in that. I think so, so but... I, you know, like Cruz, you know, I mean, he makes such cartoon faces, you know, but to show, like, what he's really about is, you know, much harder, you know, but he'll make these really doughy-looking faces. So and much then, oh, man. <laughs> and, and so you know, like uh, here, he's a preacher's son. So I'm just trying to like create that image, and that's that's how he speaks to people. You know, he talks like you know you're you're part of the choir, or you're part of the faithful, and you're going to follow him any place. And so you know, I just wanted to project that to him. You know. The psychology of that is so interesting to me because he is, people hate him so much. Obviously he has a huge following, but he, do you think that he actually believes that he's a very likable human being? I think Sorry, he everybody yeah. I guess is uh, very yeah. clear about my yeah. political. <laughs> yeah, I think he likes himself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, but I, he's gotta know that, that like the whole Senate, like, Everybody hates him. I, yeah, Mitch, I mean, Mitch really McConnell, good. if he could, would, would, I think, kill him. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and that you know because he's just he's he's stymied everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and so yeah. Okay, so let's we've got Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> um, he appears to be such like a, you know an old crank, um, but lovable at the same time. I just wanted if you could talk a little bit about what he's like behind the scenes, because he also seems like somebody who's not actually, doesn't care so much what his public perception is. Yeah. I mean, he's pretty natural, but is that is that real, or is that also a yeah. performance? Yeah, I think I think he is, that he, he couldn't care about his hair, where Donald Trump very much cares about his hair. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, but yeah, he, 
I think he really hates the artifice of running for office. Mm -hmm. and, and so to me, why this shot has any meaning is he came off the stage and he tried to create this moment for photographers. And, you know, it's like he, he's doing this power salute and, and, you know, for three people, you know. And it's just like, you're just kind of like, okay, you know, I took it, you know. And then later, you know, I said, okay, it works, you know. But, but it was like so out of character for him, mm -hmm. you know, because he really, he, his message is, is what's important to him. And, you know, like me, he, he, he hates someone like me because I use flash. And so he, he just, he, at one point, like I had already left, but he started screaming at another photographer, this very famous photographer, to stop using flash. And he, this when he was on stage or? Yeah, yeah, oh, from wow. the podium. Oh. He stopped his speech <laughs> <laughs> and yelled at this guy. And this guy, you know, wasn't using flash. So, <laughs> you know. so yeah, I, you know, I mean, some of the photographers in the room know who that is. And so it was, it was kind of fine. Yeah. So. There he is again with his flash. I'm yeah. sure he's loving you at that moment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was, you know, just this huge cluster of, of media. He was trying to go through a door at the debates, and actually, Andrea Mitchell, who's, you know, just this great reporter who works really hard, and, but she's getting very old, was just being crushed by mm -hmm. the media. And he actually, like, stopped everybody and it, his people took the Bernie sign and were making a barricade from the photographers, and he like, kicked her off of the ground. You know, it was like, yeah, we're not very nice most of the time. So, <laughs> so in addition to shooting all of the candidates over the, uh, you know, in all of the political events over the last year, um, we've also had Mark go and shoot kind of behind this, like, basically looking at what the American people are thinking about the election, thinking about what our, you know, the state of our country is. And so I thought maybe, this, this is just a selection from a few different places. Um, and I thought maybe you could talk about what you're seeing from the people outside of the political arena. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was really great to do this and it, it was your idea and it was, you know, really good. And, you know, I, and it gave me such a perspective of how disappointed most people are in this country with what's going on. And whether they believe in Trump or whether they believe in Clinton, you know, in the end, most people, you know, I'd interview people after I took their, their pictures and, and most people would say that they, they didn't believe whoever got in, their lives would change whatsoever. You know, and, and that was really, you know, sad in a lot of ways that, that, you know, that they just thought their votes, even when they voted, wouldn't count or change anything in their lives. But yeah, I mean, I went through Virginia and Florida and, you know. New York. Yeah, yeah. Nevada. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just went through Arizona. And it, I mean, just about every single person, you know, and. It, some people who, you know, totally supported Trump and had signs all over their lawn, they were still like, nothing is going to change in our lives, you know. Do you think that's different than previous elections? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it feels and, worse. Yeah, and I think that's part of the political process, though, that's going on is, is you know, that, you know, the rhetoric and everything is, is an attempt to disenfranchise people and make people feel less you know, like, like there is a reason to run. You know, that's at least been a conservative uh, strategy for a long time, mm -hmm. you know. So. It seems to be working then. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, then we have Trump. And I didn't even write any notes because I figured <laughs> there's a lot to say. Um, but I thought we would just go through a few of the, the more, I don't know, just some of the many, 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 many thousands of pictures we've seen of Trump over the last oh, two man. years. Um, 
you've been very patient. So. <laughs> This was, this was he, he brought the media to his hotel. Um, it, it was, I think, in December after uh, a Republican uh, event. And so then he, he wanted to show off this new hotel, which he just had a ribbon cut, uh, cutting for. And so he brought the media in, and then suddenly he brought us into the construction part of it, and that's not snow. I think that's all asbestos dust. So uh, I think we're all going to die from that experience. And like the Secret Service was just going nuts because we're, you know, we're walking around jackhammers and, uh, you know, sledgehammers and every kind of thing you could use to kill somebody, you know, and that. So yeah, it was pretty interesting. But uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, people, you know, think he's just doing this as, you know, promotion for his brand, but, mm -hmm. you know, he might have destroyed his brand, too. So. Do you think that that's why he got into the election, or do you actually think that he truly believed that he would be a good president? I think he's so narcissistic mm -hmm. that he, he believes both, both of those things, mm -hmm. that he was doing it for his brand, but he also believes that he's smart enough to run the country because mm -hmm. he, you know, has run a hotel or built a building or, right. you know, went into bankruptcy four times, so. That seems yeah. like a good qualification. Yeah, so. Um, where are we here? And there, he's shouting at, at a supporter. He, he thought the person was asking him a nice question and then the person basically asked him about fracking and you know, he had the person kicked out after that moment, oh. you know, so. Did he have an answer for it or did he just? <laughs> he, yeah, get out. <laughs> <laughs> so. So I just was hoping you could talk a little bit about his ego and how he approaches all of these events. And do you have anything you could say about, <laughs> about all of that? Um, it, I'll talk about my own ego, I guess. <laughs> First, um, I did take a picture of him at, at that event where he's pointing, and it, it ran on a magazine as a cover. And so, like, it, every event, he, you know, would sit there and mention that, that I'm on the cover of this magazine. They love me. Everybody loves me. I'm a supermodel. And he'd go, I mean, he wouldn't talk about issues about fracking or whatever, he'd talk about that and stuff. So uh, one time, uh, you know, I'm up on stage, you know, after he spoke and he's down shaking hands and that's where, you know, you kind of get to shoot him from. And all of a sudden, this guy comes over and starts yelling at me, you, come here, you, come here. And I, and I thought they finally figured out that I'd taken this one picture where he looked, his mouth looks like a anus, basically. <laughs> um, and that they were gonna kick me out. And uh, so it ended up being his campaign manager. And he goes, I want you to meet Donald, come backstage. And so they brought me back and all of a sudden he comes walking in and he goes, you know, the campaign manager goes, he took that picture, he took it. And Donald just goes, that was great. That was so great. <laughs> and he walks off. So, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's pretty much what I know about him. <laughs> <laughs> or what I know about me, I guess. So I, I guess I'm the narcissist and all of this, maybe. So did that answer your question that's whatsoever? <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was actually like this, basically a picture very much like this, where he's, he, once again, is preaching to his faithful, mm -hmm. you know. They actually took this picture and uh, they sent it out as a tweet. They stole it from Redux mm -hmm. and MSNBC, mm -hmm. I think from the site, yeah. and sent it out, and we asked them to stop that. So. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. They did they did. apologize or no, acknowledge it in not. any way? Of or? course not. No. Okay. They gave me a couple of casino 
chips. I <laughs> so uh, the next few slides are all about supporters, the Trump supporters and the fans. So we have quite a lot of them. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're like, uh, you know, I mean, I remember coming out of uh, a rally in uh, Massachusetts, and, and I, I mean, it's not a great story, but it, it was just a father and his two teenager sons, and one of the sons just looked at him, at the father, and went, that was really great, you know, and they, it was like they had just watched a TV show. And that's, you know, uh, what it was like for him. You know, it wasn't like they said, oh, I really like that he's about this or he supports that or, you know, I'm going to vote for him because of this. But it was just like this, uh, you know, idea that, that they had just seen a spectacle, you know? So. The cult of celebrity. Yeah, yeah. So this is not an entirely fair pairing. I realize that. I would never do this um, <laughs> under other circumstances. But I was wondering <laughs> if you could speak about the family and their part in the campaign and specifically um, the deeply creepy comments that he has made about his daughter. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can go that deep about his comments about... Ivanka. Yeah. I, I will say about this picture um, of her. So the campaign put out that she was going to go to this cafe and meet, you know, the staff and, you know, greet voters and that. And so the press, we went there and she sat in a booth and we were told that she didn't want any pictures. And, and so the only picture was when she left and the staff said, well, can we have a picture with you? And, and then, you know, the staff was trying to block me and the other four photographers. Why I took it? I, I shouldn't have. If I had any integrity, I would have just <laughs> eaten lunch and left, you know. But, but I guess I'm, I'm just one of those celebrity <laughs> stalkers and that. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just like she, she you know, um, when, when the debates happen, you know, she'll come into the room and she'll sit down in the chair and then she'll sit up and pose for the photographers. So it's still like, like she's being a model. Hmm. Yeah, but I can't really speak about his relationship <laughs> with her. I've been sworn to secrecy really? on that. So. so then we have Hillary, and uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about um, her public uh, performance. Uh, I mean, uh, one of the greatest feats of strength I've ever seen in my life was during the Benghazi hearings. Mm -hmm. uh, when she sat there for 11 hours and was asked all those questions and never once rolled her eyes, you know? It was, I mean, it was, un and during the debates, too. Yeah, she's really, rem has remarkable self-control. Yeah, yeah, that, you know, the questions or what, mm -hmm. you know, Donald said that she never rolled her eyes and gave him that shot, you know? Mm -hmm. She's, uh, yeah, she's an incredible politician, you know. She, she doesn't like the press much, but she, she's- Is that because she's uncomfortable or because she's wary of being portrayed poorly or? Well, I, I can't imagine, you know, going through what she's gone mm -hmm. through just with the whole, you know, first presidency, yeah. with Clinton and, you know, just, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, but she, yeah, she hates the press probably more than Trump. Okay. So. Does she, when she's not, when it's just behind the scenes, does she, is she cold or is she, um, is she just, she's doing her job and she's professional and. Yeah, I, I mean, she, she's maybe one of the best politicians we've ever seen. Okay. You know. So she's just being professional 
all doing the time. Her, okay. Yeah, she. You, you never see her let up. Okay. You know, or or you know, you never see behind that curtain. Hmm. You know, so. Okay. So we have these are Clinton supporters. The next few are Clinton supporters. Maybe you could talk about the difference between what it's like at a Clinton rally versus a Trump rally. Uh, at Clinton rallies, they don't play opera. Usually better music, better <laughs> dancing um, before she gets on and that. And yeah, and uh, less anger. You know, now, you know, you, you, you're put in a pen usually when Trump goes up on stage and you know the the supporters now are coming over to the pen and yelling at the press and saying tell the truth or whatever and um, you know like uh, one photographer after he was yelled at then he asked the person their name and the person gave him their name you know because of course they wanted to be shown you okay. know in the newspaper or wherever so yeah but uh, yeah th there's much more diversity at Clinton so <laughs> <laughs> did you want to talk about what happened at this rally um, this was in uh, Santa Cruz um, in California it was a Trump rally and outside there were people waiting for the supporters mm -hmm. when they came out demonstrators and it ended up being a lot of scuffling there's a lot of video of what happened uh, this woman uh, was wearing a, a trump on the back it says trump and a number usa and she was going around uh, you know, I don't want to use the word egging because that's what happened to her, but she was egging on the crowd to yell at her and stuff, and then eventually uh, she got cornered and people threw eggs and stuff. Um, there was a really great article in the New York Times two days ago about this whole incident, and it just uh, talked about two of the people, one a Trump supporter and one an anti-Trump supporter and how much... Is it the guy in the back clapping? Uh, that could be the guy, yeah. Okay. He, he ended up getting arrested. Um, but how much they actually had in common, but that they are on two different sides, but that they are in the same situation, both were unemployed, both were uh, second or third generation immigrants, and it, it was a really great article. Mm. So, Seven. yeah. So this on the left is a Hillary supporter, and on the right is a Trump supporter. And this was in Pennsylvania in September, and you know the the Trump supporters will just go right in people's faces and and yell at them, you know. So. And, th and that aggression has gotten worse exponentially yeah. over the last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I worry what's going to happen in the next week. So with Trump supporters. So. What do you do? You have any? What do you think is going to happen? Uh, well, I mean, I imagine they'll attack the press after rallies, mm -hmm. but I worry that well, they'll they're already go, doing that. Yeah, you know, but I, w I worry that they'll go and burn a mosque or things like that, you know, which would be really sad. So. And embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you feeling um, election fatigue from people on the road? Totally, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think most people are, are really discouraged by the choices this year, you know. And, you know, voting, you know, just because that's their only choice. And, yeah, this group endorsed Donald Trump, and it, this was a rally because uh, um, the governor of South Carolina had removed the Confederate flag, and so the Klan went there and had a demonstration which ended up, you know, just dissolving very quickly. There were about 
50 Klan members, uh, about 300 anti-Klan people, and about 1,000 police. And yeah, it lasted about 15 minutes of just people yelling at each other, and yeah. It was good for pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so this seems to sum up quite a lot of <laughs> why people support and why they like Donald Trump, I think. Um, so I don't know if there's, if you have any insight into the psychology of why people would support this man for president. I don't mean that actually, I don't mean that yeah. as, as I, I'm serious, I would like yeah. to know, because it, it's very different than how many people I, I know think about it. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, people in their lives, they feel frustrated that, that they haven't succeeded, and they blame other people for it. And I think that's, you know, Trump's appeal, that he's blamed immigrants, or, you know, he's blamed women, or whoever. And so if you look at the audience, they're, they're mostly, you know, middle-aged men who feel like, you know, their lives have passed them by and they didn't get the opportunity because somebody else took them. Do you feel like over the, over the last few months, some of the more moderate supporters have dropped out and what you're seeing now are the more extreme or is that not, is that not right? I, I think the moderate supporters are still there, mm -hmm. and they're still going to vote for Trump, you know. And, but they just don't admit it, right? Okay. You know, does that worry you about? Do you think that there are far more people who are just not admitting it, but will actually on November eighth? I don't think he'll win. If that's thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> If we all vote, I encourage you all <laughs> to vote. So, so this man, I, I didn't publish these photo, these pictures, yeah. but I, I find them so deeply disturbing on so many levels. Um, and I, I chose not to publish them because I felt like it was just going too far. Yeah. Um, but maybe you could talk a little bit about about this this aspect of his fans. Yeah, I mean, in every rally, there's, I'd say, 10 or 15 percent of people that, that would hold this view, a very racist view mm -hmm. of Obama or a sexist view of Hillary, if not more. And uh, for a while, they allowed T-shirts like this. There's one that maybe people have seen about Monica Lewinsky mm -hmm. that people wear at the rallies. And they actually stopped allowing people in or having them cover it up because of the press about it. Okay. So, um, it, you know, Trump supporters and, and, and people on the right have criticized media about, you know, portraying Trump supporters in this way. Yeah. But I think it's kind of hard not to sometimes because <laughs> yeah. there seems to be a, they're very vocal, we'll say, at the rallies, at the events. You can't yeah. help but. Yeah. Photograph them. Yeah, well, I think he uses code words that are very racist code words. So, I mean, that is his audience. That is his message. You know, it, you know, he, he's not hiding it, mm -hmm. you know. And I think the media has, if the media has been unfair, I think it's that we haven't shown enough of it, shown enough of the racism that's mm -hmm. there, you know. there. The New York Times had this incredible, just kind of like open mic video where you just heard what people shouted yeah, after, after a line of Trump. And it was just like, you're just like, whoa. And, and you hear that all the time at the rallies. It's not like an unusual thing, you know? From the beginning or is that just mo more recently? From the beginning, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and are there other people, more moderate people in the audience who are yeah. ashamed of that or? No, you don't hear anybody telling someone okay. to be quiet okay. ever or like shunning that person, moving away from them. Mm -hmm. Usually it, it's more like they're laughing at that person or, or you know, okay. like that. So, yeah, it's, yeah. So this, <laughs> this, this woman, is something, and she's got, she's got a button 
It says, what does it say? Sexy chicks for... Hot chicks hot for chicks Trump. Hot chicks for Trump. Yeah. Um, are you seeing a lot <laughs> of um, female supporters still, even after all the controversy? Yeah. And uh, I mean, at this rally, there were... Because this is just the other day, this yeah, picture. There were dozens of these signs, and, and Trump, you know, was even mentioning them. You know, oh, look, look at all this women for Trump signs. Well, he had printed them up, but, you know. <laughs> But yeah, he, I guess he was surprised that people had him. But yeah, there were, I'd say half the audience is women. And you know, they, you know, you hear comments where it's just like, oh, you know, that's just guy talk or whatever. You hear women saying that, okay. you know? But it, a lot of times in the audience, you know, you, you'll hear people just scream and stuff and you'll turn around and it'll be like, you look and it'll be like, like your grandma or grandpa yeah. yelling like this vile stuff, you know? And, and it's, I mean, that's the anger out there, you know? And, and, you know, it's people on social security or, you know, people on Medicare who are screaming against the government, mm -hmm. you know, and the programs. So. so I don't remember this from four years ago. I don't remember this at other, I mean, certainly there were people who were disenfranchised, people who were absolutely um, struggling under the weight of, of horrible things in this, you know, in this country, but I don't remember this kind of overt, um, aggressive behavior. Yeah, yeah, I think he's brought that out because he's aggressive. You know, I mean, I don't think... Uh, so it's like giving people... Yeah, yeah. He's given people license to do it, you know? And I think, um, uh, you know, like, people believe that Mil Mitt Romney didn't, you know, go far enough and say the right things. So now they believe that they have to say it, you know, to win this election, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's where the anger comes from. They're, the... The people in Trump's audience are more angry at the Republican Party, oh. almost more than mm -hmm. they are at Hillary. And they believe that the Republican Party has failed them more okay. than the government or the Democrats. The Democrats, they just think, are crazy communists, you know? So, like that. And this is our last one. So, this I think is interesting because of. Well, maybe you can talk about um, what's going on now with, with your access with the Trump campaign. Um, so the, this is how the you know, Trump campaign, like once the event starts, you're not allowed to wander around. You're, you're put in a cage and you're, you know, you're told to, that you have to stay there for the whole event. And that allows, of course, the supporters to come over and yell at you, but also what it does, and the, the difference between a Trump event and a Hillary event is the Hillary event, they'll light kind of the whole area so you can see the supporters and that, but the Trump event, all the light is on him. And what they want is for you to just, the whole time he speaks, to only take pictures of him and, you know, focus on him. Wow. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's what it's about. I mean, it, it has much more psychology than just that, but it's, you know, in the end, that's what they want. They want you to just, you know, photograph him and not divert any attention to anybody else. I mean, that speaks on so many different levels. It speaks about his psychology, but it also talks about, you know, control and manipulation of, of the story and, and con, you know, controlling what, what and how you're seeing and what and how you're, you're taking photographs of. Do you, um, obviously, a Trump presidency would have a significant um, effect on press freedom? I, I uh, think both campaigns are gonna be very restrictive of the press. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, but yeah, I think Trump will be more, I mean, he's going to sue people, you know, if he's president, is what it's going to come to. Maybe he's going to sue me, I don't know, so, <laughs> us. Great, that's my name on the book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
so I thought maybe if anybody has any questions, we could. Here, I can bring a mic around if you want to call on someone. Um, yeah, a lot of what I was trying to do with the pictures was just to make them look more theatrical because these events are really fake when you go to them. For the most part, they take the same podium and they move it from place to place. And they, they stage everything. They, they put a, a, a stand up where the American flag or, you know, Texas supports Trump sign will be right behind them, you know. And so what I've tried to do is avoid that kind of uh, image throughout it and just with the flash and, you know, with the flash adds dimension to it and also it freezes things much more than if, if you don't use a flash. So it it makes things more like a caricature. And so that's what I've tried to do, you know, is to create what I consider the, the falseness of most of these events, you know. The policies aren't false, you know, what Trump says or what Hillary says, that's, but the events themselves are very fake, you know, and orchestrated. I mean, they're a TV studio is what they really are. And the supporters are just an audience. You know, and that's what it's all about. So, we've got one with the where you used the flash so much so that the face was stark white. There was no longer a characteristic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the trunk. I love that picture. Oh, where it's just the hat. Oh, it's just amazing. Yeah. It's just I think I just had the wrong exposure, but, <laughs> which is most of my pictures and most yeah. of my, I mean, oh, we, we in share, all we, seriousness. We share this, I yeah. have to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you're the master, you know, but. No, you're the master, Mark. You know, <laughs> so many pictures are mistakes. Look at this, son of a bitch. Know. I mean, my goodness gracious. You know. But then you, then you like that mistake, and then you try and recreate it, or you try and work on that kind of, you know, theme. It's a, it's a sunburst of depersonalization, huh? So, he was so proud of that hat. You, <laughs> you didn't give him the credence. He, I mean, he literally would, would try and walk right to you so you would take his picture. I mean, he was walking to every photographer that night. He was so proud of it. Uh, I have to say, I want to make a statement for, for Mark and uh, about him is that he's not at all an ideologue. You can tell this by these pictures, because even though they're rash, brash, you know, photographed in a certain kind of way, there's still a deep and sympathetic humanity to each and every side, and that, my dear, is beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Do you have any other questions? Anybody else? You're in contact with such a kind of intensity of emotion um, of of the like best kinds and the worst kinds, and like I don't I sit at a desk all day and like occasionally have words with a publicist, but that's it. Like, what do you do to kind of like let it out of your system in this whole process? Um, <clears throat> in the in the in the past, I I would listen to the speeches a lot, you know, because then you can kind of you know, know when people are going to react, you know. But now, a lot of times, I'll listen to music, and, you know, and then I'm just kind of seeing things visually, you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, you know, I think this election is affecting all of us. I mean, I think all of us are, like, you know, uh, addicted to watching the day-to-day, -day, I mean, I, I, I'm sure you wake up, or most people in this audience wake up, and you look at your your phone, you know, for what the new absurd thing somebody has said, you know. So, yeah, it's you know, it's affecting us all. I think so. It's crazy, you know. But I I listen to music, I guess, it's, <laughs> you know. So. Or I just take my flash and I just, you know, <laughs> just strobe myself for a couple hours, you know? So, you know, I, yeah, so.
Yeah, I mean, the, the tough part, you know, when you go to repeated rallies is to try and find a different picture, you know. And, uh, you know, I don't know if this is really the answer to your question. And, and it's like, that's my fear. Every, every time I walk in the door is like, oh, you know, it's the same, you know, background. It's, it's the same podium, you know, and that. And, you know, the only thing that does change it is like the supporters, you know, and, and that. And they, they usually are different. You know, the only people who seem to travel consistently are the people hawking the, you know, make America great hats, right. you know. But what about also the politicians themselves? As um, your recognition builds, as the campaign goes on and on, does that uh, play into the relationship that you did in the photographs? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think I, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, I've made certain pictures of Trump already, so that now I'm always trying to make a different picture of that. You know, I, I've made every anus shot you can make of him, you know? And I mean, I, I can't believe that nobody in his campaign didn't tell him to stop pursing his lips like that. I mean, because he will hold it, he, I mean, He'll, he'll just hold it like that, and you're just like, how can you do that, you know? I, Nobody I, does that. I Nobody does so that expression. That yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, Milan. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know, so, yeah. Yeah, I did. It hurts to look at. Yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, the, you know, there's certain T-shirts that I I wondered if I should, you know, photograph. There's certain expressions that, you know, should I really take that shot of, you know, Hillary like that? You know, I mean, is that fair? So yeah, I question I question a lot of my own pictures. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you edit later more than you edit at the time. You know, I, I mean, I go, I go blood simple when I shoot, and I just shoot everything I can, you know, and hope that I get one, one exposure right or whatever, you know, so. But yeah, I mean, I, there's always, you know, you, you always question yourself if you're really, uh, I mean, I don't think I'm, I'm you know, uh, a photojournalist in these pictures, you know, and, but I believe strongly in that notion and, and the press and, and the fairness of the press. So, you know, there's been times I've had to really look at this work and question, you know, what I'm doing or not doing in it, yeah, so. Yeah, fl my flash is my best friend, you know, so it's, I, yeah, no, I always, <laughs> I always use flash, and, and I mean, I just like it, you know, I, I mean, I'm, uh, a lot of my work is color, and I just, uh, I like how um, it just makes the colors come out, and also, uh, you know, uh, in the past, um, I used to have to shoot slide film, and so to really get things to freeze and, you know, you couldn't use high I ISO film, you had to use flash, you know. And so it was just like, uh, you know, yeah, so I've always used flash. And here's the master of flash right here. So you just said something, what I was going to ask about, about about film, and a lot of photojournalists have complained in the last era about the transition from analog to digital. And I think of all the photojournalists working, you not only made the transition more seamlessly, but you've made 
digital part of your vision. Uh, and I wondered if you could talk, a, do you have anything to say about that? And, and the other thing is, what's next, man? <laughs> <laughs> the apocalypse, I think. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it depends, uh, you know, if that surprise happens on November 8th, so. Um, it, you know, digital, uh, I mean, le what I was just saying about shooting slides, um, it, that was very restrictive in a lot of ways, and you were very limited to either great daylight at certain times or using flash. And digital, you know, has brought it back to what it was like, for me at least, I don't know for other people, but for me what it was like to be able, when I shot black and white film, and you had that latitude and you had, you know, especially digital, you can walk outside and be at 100 ASA and, and walk inside and instantly be at 3200, and it just gives you this latitude and, and versatility that, yeah, well, that, obviously I didn't. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 for me, it's given me a lot of that freedom back, that, that slide, I love slides, and I love when you make a perfect slide, but I, I, God knows how many slide pictures I have just like that, so, you know, that you could never do anything with, so. We have time for one last question. If anybody has one, I saw a couple hands in there. No. I mean, I, I whatever Mark wants to shoot, I'm good with that. I mean, I prefer the black and white for this project, yeah. but and I wanted to keep it consistent, um, but yeah. you, it's because you do it. It's not yeah. For this, how this project started was uh, I went to a rally in, in D.C. and I shot it and, and I looked at the pictures and the pictures didn't look as fake as the rally was. The rally was, was just a TV studio and it was just these people walking out of the U.S. Capitol and doing a sound bite and walking back in. And so I took the pictures and I put them through my cell phone and just started playing with different apps and, you know, just just destroying the pictures, basically. Right, so they start out in yeah, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, and, and so, uh, to me, the black and white made it look more unreal and more theatrical, you know, like the things I love, you know, like I love Citizen Kane and those kind of Dutch angles in that movie and the, the black and white that's in that movie and the shadows and, and so, you know, I'm just kind of ripping that off in a way, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 so. Right, Let's well, drink. <laughs> Let's give a hand Thank for Mark you. for Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Amy. And for Amy as well.